It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it's time for another First Thoughts and Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on Birgitta, the newest RGB 5 star that was just shown this morning earlier over on YouTube. As with all of my First Impressions videos, I give you my two cents on the character. Do I think they're good? Where I'd play them? What kinds of equipment sets I'd play them on? What kinds of artifacts I'd play them on? All those things you've come to expect from me in a First Impressions video. As always, if you enjoy the style of content, leave a like on the video or comment down below to appease the algorithm gods. Or if you really enjoy it, please consider subscribing. We are almost at that 10,000 subscriber milestone. Anyways, enough yapping. Let's get into Birgitta's S3 animation. Only by knowing yourself and knowing your enemy can you succeed. So if there's something you want to learn, come find me. Think before you act. Or learn a painful lesson. I'll treat you nice. Well, it's not my favorite S3 animation that the art department has ever done. It certainly feels a hell of a lot better than Dragon Bride Senya's, which still, to me, feels unfinished. What is not a disappointment, though, is Birgitta's English voice actress, who is Wendy Lee, one of the most well-known and respected anime dub voice actresses of the last 25 to 30 years. She's famous for roles such as Faye Valentine in Cowboy Bebop, Yoruichi Shihoen in Bleach, and also the namesake of my Epic 7 account, Haruhi Suzumiya. Moving on to Birgitta's stat, she is an Ice Soul Weaver of the Scorpio Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with the collab hero, Ai Ningning. She has 785 attack, 634 defense, 5077 health, 114 speed, 15% critical at chance, 150% critical at damage, 30 starting effectiveness, and no starting effect resistance. This translates to the second fastest speed in the game for Soul Weavers behind Taurus, which is characters like, say, Ray or Ahmed, for example, and fairly high starting effectiveness, but just average health and defense for a Soul Weaver. As for imprints, we have attack percentage for the top and bottom slots and effectiveness for herself, which is pretty good because she's a debuffer, but... I don't know if I would go way out of my way in wailing for the character when you consider all the other limiteds that are pretty much guaranteed to come down the pipeline in the next several months. As always, let's go over the entire kit before we talk about the character on the whole. First up, the S2 Subterfuge. It's a non-attack skill that dispels two debuffs from an ally and increases the combat radius of that ally by 35-50% to 50%, depending on Malagora and grants Birgitta an extra turn. Next up is the S3, nothing personal, kid. She teleports behind a single enemy before dispelling all buffs from them and has a 75-100% to 100 chance each to inflict bind and block for two turns. Soul burn for the cost of 20 souls ignores effect resistance. Bind is a debuff found on the character Nequal, as you're probably familiar with, but block is a new debuff that reads unaffected by any buffs, some beneficial effects, and dispels debuff effects except when granted by the bear. Applies to heroes only. Essentially, this is a fancy way of saying the person hit with block is the only person that can dispel block and all other debuffs on them. So if you hit a character like Lone Cressa Bologna, who does not have a cleanse in her kit, she is stuck with the bind and the block. Things like Mediator Kawaric or Destina or Moon Bunny Dominia, none of these characters can get rid of block. They are essentially stuck there with those debuffs. Finally, we have the basic skill Baseless Rumor. Attacks the enemy and decreases the combat range of the target by 10 to 15%, depending on Malagora. When the target is inflicted with block, doubles the amount of combat range decrease up to 30%. So, now that we know the kit, let's talk about the character. And I want to start with the S2 Subterfuge. This thing is essentially just a worse version of Amelia's skill 2, because it's the 50% CR push, plus the 2 debuff dispel, but it doesn't have the attack buff. But I think we give that a pass because it does have an extra turn stapled to it. And that is actually kind of important that it gives an extra turn because that means it opens up the possibility to play Ahmed's artifact, Fan of Light and Dark, on this character. Whereas previously that is a limited artifact that only really has a use case on Ahmed. So now at least there is another user for it. Uh, and then obviously her having a CR push means that she's very good for a very aggressive style of play. And then the debuff, the spell is also very, very nice. So there's nothing really to complain about with Subterfuge. It's pretty standard. The extra turn makes it either better or worse than the attack buff in your eyes, depending on what you actually value on the character. My biggest concern is that this character is two non-attack skills. We'll talk about the S3 uh, in a second after this. 
And we're going into a patch where Green Selene is getting a massive overhaul, like huge buffs. And a lot of people are expecting her to see a ton of play. So it doesn't really bode well for the newest Soul Weaver coming out to be highly susceptible to a character that's expected to see a lot of play in the new patch. But we'll get through it. For the basic skill, it doesn't really thrill me, right? It's pretty bog standard. A lot of characters at this point have a CR pushback on their S1. The thing that annoys me the most is that they insist on giving it to characters that try to make it so you can't play the game. So like AOL is trying to silence lock you or like Nikwal is trying to make it so that you can't ever get a turn to get out from underneath the bind status. They're doing the same thing here at Beer Gita, which is like fine, I guess, because there's a precedent. But I really think it's kind of bad game design to just like try to not have players play the game. Like you just want to sit there and have them suffer and hope that they can get a turn because of skills like this yeah i'm just not a fan i just think it's not really great game design anyways let's talk about the skill three nothing personal kid because this is pretty much the meat and potatoes of the character this is like a more fair version of the quals s3 like the quals s3 into s2 is very very debilitating combo it doesn't let the opponents like actually enter the game because their skills get pushed back and then they have, uh, they get hit with bind, which is really, really bad. Like the entire enemy team is bound and they can't actually play the game. Um, that move probably should never, ever have been AOE. So this is like the fixed version of it and that you get to strip everything from one person instead of the entire enemy team. And you get to bind one person, which is a lot more fair, uh, introduces a lot more counterplay. And then obviously you get block here, which is, very, very good in a lot of cases because essentially you can't get rid of it, right? You bind the one person, they are blocked out and they're stuck there. They are borderline useless, right? So this is good for playing against things like maybe uh, Abyssal Euphine, maybe Captain Landy, uh, Lone Crescent Bologna, like in the video. It's very good versus Genua because if you bind and block him, then he can't actually activate wild dog company to get plan a because of bind and therefore he's just stuck with it and there's nothing that he can do about it so this is definitely a character that's designed to silver bullet him i feel like first and foremost so that does inherently give birgita some value right bind is obviously one of the strongest debuffs in the entire game for pvp it might actually be the strongest debuff in the game currently for pvp considering how strong fast play is and this is a fast soul weaver, by the way. Remember, it's the second fastest. So that's very, very good. And block makes it hard to interact with. The thing is, I can't help but shake the feeling that Nikwal is just better than this character most of the time. Like, I think anytime you'd want Birgitta, Nikwal is probably a better pick. Like, that's the inescapable truth of what I'm feeling with this character is that we already have soul weavers with the 50% CR push and two debuff cleanse in the format, and they don't really see that much play. And Nothing Personal Kid is essentially just a fair and fixed version of the qual. So, yeah, I feel like overall, my assessment with this character is that she's just too fair. I don't think she's a bad designed unit, but at the same time, in the face of how much BS there is in PvP in Epic 7 in 2024, it's really hard to recommend her when you could just play Nikwal, right? Now, that's not to say that you can't use her in some places, because I definitely think that people get a lot of mileage out of this character in, like, regular arena versus, like, the Genua defenses or, like, even uh, Guild Wars, right? Obviously, see Fan Apologist Genua plus a third, is probably the biggest meta defense right now on Guild War. So this is a pretty clean answer to that. And you're on the Soul Weaver class, which means you have better artifacts than Ranger to deal with certain debuffs, like you have Wondrous Potion Mile to get rid of the slow and things like that. So you, you do have some better options here with Birgitta than Nikwal in those scenarios. But for World Arena, I really just don't think that this character is going to make that much of a dent. Who knows, though? I could be wrong. You can let me know down in the comments below how you feel about the character. As for how I'd play her, 
because she is essentially a debuffer, speed hit is going to end up being the way, I think, most of the time. There might be some other uh, interesting options. Like, I know people might go for, like, a, a hybrid ER effectiveness build, maybe, like they do with, like, Death Dealer Ray or even, like, Sharoon, for example. But I'm not a super big fan of that, especially when we get to the artifact choices, because, like, this character has a plethora of them. But for right now, uh, like I said, Guild War and Arena on speed set with, like, hit offset seems to be the place for this character. Now to round the video, let's talk about her artifact, which is Bird's Eye View, which I think is really funny because they call it a family heirloom and weapon when it's just binoculars, guys. <laughs> Anyways, after using a non-attack skill, acquires 10 to 20 souls based on artifact level, can only be activated once. So for those of you guys who are just trying to abuse souls in like a cleaver control comp, it's great, but it's also very lazy and very whale centric because you need max copies of the artifact to get the 20 souls. I'm not like a super big fan of this thing. Cause there's just a lot of options in general and soul weaver that are great. I already talked about fan of light and dark uh, earlier because she has two consecutive skills in a row. So if you're a very aggressive player, that's an alternative for you. Uh, if you want to play her, as a more sustained oriented character, you could use Rod of Amaryllis and Unfading Memories. Remember, she has two non-attack skills in her kit. So that is two instances of healing from those artifacts. Potion Vial makes it uh, a really good option for her if you wanted to go that split uh, ER effectiveness build we talk about. I personally would rather just go all effectiveness and just rely on Potion Vial in order to stop her from being stunned or controlled or things like that. And then, of course, there's All Reliable. You could just play Water's Origin or guardian ice crystals to protect herself or her team. So like you have a lot of options with this character. So I don't really think that we need to go for bird's eye view unless you're just somebody with really deep pockets and the 20 souls really uh, appeals to you. It really speaks to you and the style of play that you're trying to implement. But yeah, overall, those are my thoughts on Birgitta. Great looking character, amazing character in the story, but the character feels far too fair in my opinion, compared to a lot of the other releases in Epic 7. And that's not to say that, like, I think the character needs a buff. It just speaks more to how much I really want nerfs in 2024 of Epic 7. Again, lots of great options for the artifacts, so don't feel super compelled to pull. Uh, I would really only go for this character if you really, really like her, especially off the fact that we just came off of back-to-back -back limiteds and a collab. So I do think this one, if you wanted to skip one, you could actually end up skipping this character. But again, who knows? Only time will tell how good she is. Let me know your thoughts again on her down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my first impressions for Dragon Bride Senya that also went up at the same time as this video. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.